Welcome to, did you just take a sip of a, <laughs> of a drink? <laughs> I gotta be ready. I gotta be, I gotta be ready. I gotta be hydrated, you know, a lot of talking. So I think Maybe everybody needs to know that right before this thing began, this man took a gigantic gulp of an off-screen <laughs> beverage. At, like I said, three, two, and while the thing is showing two, one, he's like, oh, oh, and then and then just acted like <laughs> just acted like he wasn't doing it moments before. Okay, well, we welcome go. to the welcome to the dating unsettled show where we dare to date differently. I'm your host Joy, and I'm joined today by Alex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Alex, how are you feeling? Um, I'm good. A little nervous, but I, I think overall I'm good. Excited. No need to be nervous. <laughs> it's just it's just your teammate's girlfriend who has a podcast interviewing you for the, for the first time. Is this your first podcast interview? This is my first podcast interview ever. Let's go. Go. Let's absolutely Let's go. I love that. <laughs> and so, uh, for context, folks who are listening in, uh, my boyfriend has played for Napa this year. Alex is the goalie, the keeper. If you if you're if you're of a of a UK variety um, <laughs> of Napa Valley, eighteen thirty nine. And more than just a keeper, you're your own person. Wow, you're a young man. How do you identify? Tell the people. Yeah, young young man, getting a little bit older. I identify okay. as, uh, you know, sometimes Alex, sometimes Big Daddy, um, but overall, I identify as just uh, yeah, a young man trying to find his way in, in the sometimes world. Sometimes Big Daddy, we're not ignoring that. <laughs> we're not ignoring that, and that's your. Inc- well, I don't know if you want to put your social on blast, but if you yeah, search throw it for- out there at Big Daddy Boricua. If you don't know how to spell Boricua, B O R I C U A, and you will find me. I'm not private. Um, so I'm he out said, there. I'm not private. Come and get me. <laughs> if, if they don't know how to spell Boricua, are they someone that you want to date anyway? What does Boricua mean? If they don't know what Boricua <sighs> means, is that, are they disqualified? That's a good question. Um, you know, I'll take it because I'm on the West Coast. If I was on the East Coast and they didn't know what that was, um, I'd be upset. But West Coast, so Boricua just means Puerto Rican. Um, it's just a Latino way to say it. So that's like a nickname for anyone that's Puerto Rican. Uh, you know, we're, we're Boricuas. Um, and so there's not a ton of us out here on the West Coast. So most people off the first time hearing it, don't know what it is, but um, you know what? You can still message me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you still could. So there there aren't, a ton, aren't a ton of big daddies on this West yeah. Coast. There aren't a, aren't a ton of large fathers. Uh, exactly. I, lo- I love that. Love how proudly you wear your culture. I met you just a short time ago, even though I've been watching you all season. Keep and keep and keep. You do this really funny thing when you keep and you fall to the ground and you're like... <sighs> Like it's like it's like it's like someone took a somersault and finished the somersault. Yep. This is how Alex. For those of you who are watching on YouTube, because you can follow Dating Unsettled on YouTube, subscribe to the playlist youtubecom slash Uh If you listen to the podcast, you didn't know that we have high quality audio. Now you know we have high quality audio and video. But this is how Alex keep. He'd be like, he'd be like, <laughs> that too. You got to love every that. time, and like it, even if the if the attempts are like two three apart on goal, it doesn't matter. Alex has the same routine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then he like slowly it's, emerges. It's you're necessary. Like a, yeah, you're like a goalkeeping hedgehog, but a really yeah. tall hedge, a really tall hedgehog. Yeah, so it takes me a while to get to the floor. I think yeah, I think you're one of the tallest goalies I've probably seen. I, yeah. is, is, do you do you believe that that's part of I was gonna say why you were cast because I'm an entertainment. Do you feel like that's part of why they brought you in is because you're just like I could cover the net. <laughs> yeah, you know that's a good that's a good question. You know, honestly, I played field um, most of my I start so I started when I was like three, started playing goalie when I was probably I think twelve or thirteen. And what happened was I actually mm. uh, I broke the keeper on my team's wrist at <gasps> practice, like just oh my God. regular training, and I, I injured him. Um, and then the coach was like, oh, who wants to jump in? Because we had no other goalie. I was like, oh, whatever. I'll I'll try it out. Uh, I guess I'll mess around and do it. it. Was just for, yeah, I thought it was just for one, uh, one practice. No big deal. Dang. Like, I played basketball and baseball. Like, hand-eye coordination is good. And then he was like, oh, no, you're good at this. You're, you're goalie now. I was, and so in the beginning, I actually hated it. Um, for the first two, three years, it was awful. Because um, mm-hmm. I have ADHD. And it's like being in the back away from everything is extremely hard uh, to stay wow. focused. And then you know, started to grow on me. And now I couldn't imagine, you know, doing anything else. I love it. Now you only have to focus on goal. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's great. Okay, so speaking of your focus, are you currently in this moment single, Alex? Yes, ma'am. Very single right now. Very single. What makes you say very single? What's very single oh. to a man? Oh this man, is... very single to a man is let's get into boy math. Let's, White... let's yeah, boy math for for me at least is uh very single is r- really not looking and also really not thinking anyone's gonna come around that's really gonna change that, honestly. Um, mm, so just really mm. focusing on myself and, you know, to the inward reflection part of that, it's just, uh, I don't even think I'm ready. I think I need space to find out a little bit more about myself before I even get in a relationship as well. So just on both sides of it, just can't imagine uh, not being single right now. I'm not really in the head space right now. Like I'm really <laughs> working on myself. Okay. So exactly. the reason I, I exactly. really wanted to interview you and have you here on Unsettled is because I feel like a lot of the girls that... I, you know, I'm kind of in community with who are dating online, who are looking for love for maybe in their 20s or 30s, especially we're coming up against the use. We're coming up against this breed, this strain, this genre of this variant, if you will, um, (laughs) of man who's like who seems really cool, who seems like deeply, you know, community oriented and invested and busy. He's got great things going for him. Maybe he got a job. He might be tall. He might be this. He might be that. But then when it comes down to dating and partnership is like, guard up, shield up. You know, I'm not, (laughs) I'm not here for that. I'm not looking for that. And that's so like from the girl's perspective, that is so frustrating for us as women. Mm. Like we know that we're told that we mature faster than men. Um, You know, a lot of us are told we're like articulate or presentation ready or whatever the thing is. And it's like, growing up as that girl that's like ahead of the guys is a very special pain. <laughs> it's like, it's very special. When I, when sure. I grew up, I, I mean, I've been liking boys since I was too young, maybe like four <laughs> years old, five years old, because yeah. I had a reading, I had a reading level that was four years ahead of mine. So the oh. things that I knew, yeah. So like at five, I was thinking like a nine year old, you know, and yeah. at nine, you might start to have those crushes, but I'm here, yeah. you know, fresh out of diapers, like plotting on, you know, <laughs> Jimmy on the playground. Yeah, it's <laughs> right. It's like you're still yeah. eating applesauce out of a pouch. Why do you think he's looking at you? Um, yeah. But it's a special pain that I think a lot of girls know of that feeling of readiness and then looking around at the boys to now men in your peer set or who are about your age and they're just like not into it, not ready, not interested, not invested. Meanwhile, we have Pinterest boards. We have the, since you know high school the different wedding cakes and and things like that thought out and planned out and it's not that there's a need i'm realizing now you know as i approach 30 no it's like a Same. weird thing to say it's not Same. like right it's like not now like i'm not you know not today not this year not that, but yeah. but you know as we approach this like magic number 30 um thinking about how much i've rushed my life how much we've rushed our lives like as daters as people how much we felt like we need to be there so i wanted to ask you and just get in dialogue with you about what what is it that makes guys your age like have this very very profound like you sounded very sure of yourself when you're like i'm not i'm not even looking i'm not ready when you absolutely could do so and you have the ability to do so you got a phone you got you know you got the money the time the whatever what is it that's making you 100% sure that you don't want to date or look for love. Yeah. So I I would say I might be a little different than, than I guess the average guy my age, um, simply because like I, as I mentioned to you, like I'm in therapy right now. um, Therapy. Yeah, therapy. And, uh, you know, going about, I think the relationship game right now, different than I ever have. Um, I think I was more in, in line with you. I was the one who, at 18 years old, I was looking for my wife at 19 years old, 20. I was like, where's, where's wifey? Like I was, I think like back to back relationships from like 14 to like, wow. Now. 14. Yeah. Yeah. Like that was my first relationship. And it was like two years. Like oh my first God. one, off, at first 14? one off, the, off the bat. I remember at the end of it, like we were like, what was that? Freshman, sophomore in high school. We were like looking at college yeah. dorms and we're like, we're going to go to St. Mary's together. Oh like, my God. Yeah, you're gonna be gay. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like my GPA would never. So I, you know, that was never gonna happen anyway. Um, but uh, but yeah. So I think I, I was actually the opposite until recently. And I okay. think for me, therapy had actually 
show me the patterns I was in. And which is why I'm like, there's so much work for me to do. Um, wow. And and I think, but from the men my age, and you know, I've I've realized this as well. I think, especially as like, I mean, I'm black and Puerto Rican, so especially as a black man growing up, um, you see a lot, uh, you know, on social media about like, for everyone is men from women, men ain't shit, men do this, yeah, you know, men, yeah. men do that, and it's like, hey, so you're, you're already battling against that, right? Um, and then just the expectation. Like women, I feel like you guys are at this, you you guys, well, yes, more mature than us. Um, but because of that, by the time we're getting to a maturity level, that's like maybe where you were a couple of years ago, you're already yeah. on the next step, right? So we're having to, to meet you guys there. And I consider myself a mature person. Um, yeah, yeah, still, yeah. It's, you know, still it can be tough. Um, and so really, I just think it's, it's a little bit of that. It's a little bit of, we know the expectation is high. Um and and I feel like in the dating game right now, it's, you know, money talks, right? Um, so just knowing going into relationship, the expectation for a lot of women, um, yeah, financial just providers, like, you got you you better be paying, you better be right. paying, you better be doing <laughs> this, you better be doing that, and it's like right. um, you better answer my calls, you better be available, you know, twenty four seven if I need we're something. We're like employees. You. you make us sound like Amazon employees, yeah, like we're can like. Be. Come to the warehouse, answer your yeah, damn phone, yeah, exactly. and do not miss that da, 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 with a 15 minute penalty. You will be charged exactly. a fee of $150. Hair, nails, food, exactly. send the Uber, send the car. I want a gift exactly. after as well. Like, yeah, it's it's kind of exactly. scary a little bit how it's become so. It feels like business or it feels really transactional, I would say dating I, right I now say I agree. Yeah, yeah 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 like as a I as a man because we have a lot of i've noticed this trend and i was talking about this with yvonne my boyfriend uh your teammate i was talking about this with him about music has taken a, a really big turn from male rappers having male rappers this is just a conspiracy theory mind male rappers and musicians having control of the conversation you know i'm gonna put you in a condo all the way up in toronto you know you can have whatever you like like these are the songs yeah. like i grew up yeah. with and you grew up with like high school middle school whatever yeah. it's like okay we're getting showered cool when women rappers took the mic we're like well i'm here to collect all those yeah. things you said i was <laughs> <laughs> all those exactly. things you told me you would spend on me in the thousands exactly. i'm here to get that drink i'm here to get that hair i'm here to get the whole table for my girls paid for i'm here to get flued yeah. out city girls ushered in i would say yeah. a f even fresher era of like in it, in it if he ain't spinning it you know it's like exactly. okay so but then we took i think at this point an error was made because we took what was fun and what was happening in music and in celebrity and and the bottles and the VIP and the sections and the, the flying out. We took that into most of our working and middle class lives and yep. tried to make guys like you who are just like you said, still playing catch up, still getting those jobs. Yep. We we took that into this environment and started holding off at the same standard as the millionaires in the music. And I don't I don't think that's fair. Um, I don't think it's appropriate to judge somebody by their income by their current job title or status. Hell, I'm self-employed. You know, what does that yeah. say about me? Uh, one day you have a job, the next day you're begging for gigs. So it's like, I'm I'm disappointed and honestly, frankly, concerned to see yeah. the culture of how women expect men to, it's not contribute, it's not give me a little gift. It's yes. become like, you know, fully finance my life. And if you wanna be a yeah. homemaker, cool, but I'm, I'm seeing girls who like it's like you, girl you going to work you you got 30k in the bank you can yeah you can pay for your nails baby you you can do and, it and honestly women are more i think on average what is it women are have more college degrees than men women are making we do, more yeah. than you, and you black know. men if we don't talk exactly. about black men specifically we're like yeah. highly educated more like yeah. this, this, I, mean, I, I got a degree right there i'm like that's, <laughs> i mean I'm, I'm graduate i'm educated i got a job i work in tech sales like i'm but that's by no what means I'm struggling saying. Yep, you can yeah. you can do it and we're and we love it and we celebrate yeah. you black man and we lift you up but you're choosing not to so so those of us you know the, the single in the coven are going ah, you know why <laughs> come back yeah. you know we're trying we're trying to like yeah. snatch you back into the market and i think for women i've seen this takes place in like you know why is he goes to me i haven't heard back from him it's this feeling of kind of like pulling teeth of desperation 
honestly, it becomes desperation. You become, and those are unhealed wounds, right? Yep. You become attached to that person that's not giving you everything, the person that's breadcrumbing you, the person that's stringing you along, the person who seems like he is everything on paper. He's tall, he's degreed, he's athletic, he's handsome, he's cultural, he's da da da, he's this, he's that. He's not ready, sister. And if you heard him for real, for real, he just told you he's not ready, but you're waiting for things to kind of change. So that's why I kind of want to like get into your mind. Um, so that those women can release the use that they meet, but at the same sure. time, understand and empathize with what you're going through. Like when I met, if I, if I could back it up, when I met Yvonne, uh, and I told you this, he was in a place very similar to you. He's like, I'm in my twenties. I'm not looking for a relationship right now. Just got out, you know, of something that was longer or serious, just did my therapy. This isn't the moment that I think I'm ready to like be a partner. I'll be friends though. And I was like, yeah. ugh. Literally, I was like, how many times yeah. have I heard that? But yeah. I thought he was so cute. And I thought he was so handsome. So instead of doing this harmful pattern that I'd done before of like trying to chase it and make it happen, I just kept dating, right? So he's in my phone. I'm texting yep. him from time to time. Or if he hits me up or we send each other like a little, me a little meme, a little reel. But I'm not after him. I'm after the partner I'm looking for for myself. And mm -hmm. he happened to stay in the running just by being in contact. So- yep over time though but because i met him where you are right now and i was just a friend like so we've 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 demonized friendship we've called it friend zone and we've made it i was his friend and i dated others and i had my fun and i lived my life and when yvonne got out of the place that you're in right now or when he's yep. you know okay i'm i'm personally ready to look for something there i was and i flew myself out and yep. i met him and we did everything that we wanted to do and you know we're we're literally it's our two-year anniversary like that's amazing tomorrow <laughs> that's great well yeah. i'm seeing him tonight i'm seeing him tonight yeah. to go oh you practice, get to see so. him oh you get yeah, to see so him I'm, a, I'm gonna be on him <laughs> i love it yeah yeah be on his head but so yeah. now I'm, I'm wondering with you when somebody meets you in this place or someone like you in this place like what is what's the best support that we could be or how what what do we need to understand about where you are like if you did meet if you did meet someone right now that you thought was cool but you're yeah. just not ready. Like, what What do you wish you could say to her? Well, I, I think, um, and, and this is what I've learned in therapy. I mean, really, I think be curious first before getting upset, before I feel like with women um, that I've met, especially a lot of dating, it's like, it's a lot of assumptions made. Oh, he just wants to be a player. He want, Why not ask me, hey, okay, why aren't you looking? What What is the deeper reason? Because from there, there is an understanding I'm not, I'm not thinking, okay, she wants something from me. She does actually care about me as a man because I feel like men in this world, we, we're the ones that's like, when it's tough, you lean on us. When something happens, just lean on, you know, everything is lean on us. But if we can find someone, it's like, hey, I can lean on her. I, she's, she'll be there for me. Even when she's not getting something out of it, that's like exactly what she wants. Maybe she wants to date me, but she's okay with friendship. I think that's why I worked with you and Yvonne. Um, because right now the support I would want from someone who maybe we did like each other, but I'm just not ready would just be, yeah, why don't we be friends? It doesn't mean I can't talk to you. Does it mean we, we can, you know, you can't respond to me on Instagram or text me, Hey, hope you're doing well. Um, like stuff like that. I think, I think friendship is most important, especially for someone like me. Um, you know, I grew up in a small family and I think most every girl I've ever dated, I was her friend first. Mm. I don't think I've ever dated someone without having known them for a while. Um, I think my wow. my ex is the first one I did that, but we were kind of long distance talking phase for a year before yeah, yeah. we actually before we actually got together and were like officially boyfriend, girlfriend, because one, it was long distance, but two, I'm like, I don't, I need to know you. I need to right. learn about you, um, you know? And so I think really being radically transparent is where I'm at right now. Hey, this is where I'm at. Does, does that work for you? And they say, yeah, my double check. Are you sure? Because it don't sound like what you want. Like, does, does, does this work? <laughs> this, this conversation right here, like this little yeah. pocket. Yeah. I don't, I can't even tell you how many times I've been there and girls that I know have been there. Yeah. And it, it can honestly, if you don't navigate it, if you don't hold yourself the right way and remember what you want out of this and remember what the other person said they were offering, it gets yeah. really painful really quickly. 
it's so not cool. like I want to encourage people who are listening. This is not a no go zone. It's not impossible to meet someone like Yvonne, to meet someone like Alex and then be like, you know what? They said that they can only offer friendship. So even though I think this guy's really cool, or I'm interested in dating him. I'm just going to sit in it and, and offer friendship with no expectation of it. It's not an impossible zone to be in, but yep. it's tricky. It's really tricky. Yeah. And, and that's where I feel the communication comes in. Um, Cause no, it can be, I can see it getting, I've seen stories. I've heard stories where it's like the guy says to the woman, Hey, I'm not ready for anything, but you better not talk to anybody else. Now that that's, that's the, see, I'm not about, I'm not about that. Like that's toxic. Like best believe if I say, this is where I'm at. This is all I can offer. Yeah. Please go, go live your life. Don't wait. Right. Don't put any other expectations. Like what I'm telling you is the truth. I think listen to us the first time or listen to me the first time when I say, yeah. Hey, this is where, I, this is where I'm at. There is no secret connotation or secret message hidden in the fabric. You and know, do what, you know what the secret, another <laughs> secret, there's two secret messages we hear. One of them is he thinks he's better than me. And that's like, Oof. that's the ego one that comes yeah. in, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, he doesn't think I'm good enough for a relationship. Mm -hmm. Oh, he, yeah. he doesn't think I deserve. And that's like a weird place we get into where dating, I, I literally have said this, like heterosexual dating can become competitive unnecessarily. Like he says, girl, I'm just not ready for this, you know, but like, take care of yourself. It's like, what? You know, and then we become defensive. And yep. It's like, it's a very black woman thing to do. Like, oh, he doesn't think I'm worthy. He doesn't think I can yeah. stick it out. I can stick it out. And then now yeah. you're like, who are you trying to prove? Cause he just told you he don't want you. So now you sit in here. Yeah. So we've done that. That's one of the messages yeah. we hear. I think yeah. another one that we hear is, oh, he really does want to date me, but, but he's just telling himself he doesn't so he can focus on stuff. Yeah. And it's like, that's another one that's ego too. That's like, yeah. now you do, you one, one of them is, you know, you think so lowly of yourself that you believe you need to be in competition with a man to prove something to him. Yep. The other one is you think so highly of yourself yeah. that, you, <laughs> that you think he, he's in love with you, even though he yeah. told you he's not. Yeah. And you just, and you just need to, you know, say this, this, and that to like pull it out of him. And sis, neither one is the way. Leave that boy alone. Leave that boy alone. Leave that boy yeah. alone. And also yeah. respecting that, like, you might be the prize, but Alex saying he's not ready, Yvonne saying he's not ready, someone saying they're not ready, that's, it's not about you. Like, yeah. that's, that's something I struggle with in dating, divorcing my ego from the situation. In, in the early phases of dating, and what I love to focus on in this podcast, we meet a lot of people who are swiping, who are getting to know people, who had zero mutual, you said you weren't friends with your ex, zero mutual friends to begin with. Mm -hmm. These people don't know you. Exactly. Know who you are. Exactly. I'm like, I don't even know who you are. I don't know who you are. <laughs> Somebody has to know you very yeah. well to be able to insult you. I've said this yeah. before and I've, this is, I'm, I'm a, me, I'm an actor. I'm a media personality, whatever. At this yeah. point, millions of people are engaging with my content on a monthly basis. I get yeah. the craziest comments. I get the craziest <laughs> flirtation, assumptions, yeah. uh, threats, all types of weird shit. And it's like, yeah. Nobody can tell me anything who doesn't actually know me. So I want, I want women, people, anybody to hold this with them when dating. When somebody rejects you in dating, they don't know you. They're just saying, it's not for me right now. You're not my flavor. You're not my type. But they don't know you well enough to tell you something about yourself. So don't take it that, that personal. And I, like, even while I'm listening to you, Alex, when you were talking about, like, I'm not ready. So just, you know, do what you need to do by all means. I was getting <laughs> triggered. I was, like, for, <laughs> I, was, I was getting triggered. I was like, yeah. oh my God. And I'm in a relationship. I'm chill. Yeah. We're not even, but, but I'm listening to you and there's a past single self that's yeah. like hearing somebody tell me like, nah, girl, go look for what you need. And I'm, I'm ready to fight. And I couldn't even understand what that was without talking it through. Um, yeah. Speaking of revelations and wounds, you mentioned therapy. So like yeah. for you, you were a relationship guy. And it was serial, like a serial monogamous, so to speak, from yep. 14. Um, yeah. What changed and what kind of brought you into therapy? Man, that's, I'm going to try to keep this, try to keep this short, um, you know, or concise at least. So I would say, you know, this is what's so crazy about therapy is I was the one who, so I've been in therapy probably a year and a half. Um, and before therapy, you couldn't pay me enough money to do therapy. You couldn't have convinced me therapy was useful. You couldn't have convinced. I thought therapy was for people 
who had serious trauma, like very serious, like they're messed up. They need, they're almost in a psych ward. Like that's what mm. I thought therapy was. Um, I thought I had a different definition of the word trauma. I thought trauma was like, you saw your parents get killed, like something crazy. Like okay. I didn't think trauma could be as simple as, um, you know, I need, I needed more validation for my mom. I needed a more present yeah. father, like stuff like that. You don't even realize how that affects you. Right. So Real my, my journey with therapy is honestly has been amazing. And it started in my last relationship. I owe her a lot. I grew, we both grew a lot in that relationship. Um, but we were in couples therapy actually. And it wasn't like we were at each other's necks, but we both saw there could be improvement and we both loved each other. So we're like, why don't we give it a shot? Um, it's expensive, but let's do it. Um, and, and that's, and that's kind of how that started. That was my journey in therapy. That was a little over a year ago. Um, and then from there, we, we broke up earlier this year and we're, we're still friends. Um, and I told, I was really close with the therapist after the, you know, six months or so we did it. And I told the therapist, Hey, I'm not done with my journey. I actually have my nice. own sort of stuff I need to work on. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, uh, so yeah, so, and, and I mean, I see her every Wednesday and I'm seeing her again tomorrow. Sorry, last week, wow. um, you know, she's, she's been crucial to everything I'm doing, including being single right now. And I every think week, every week is huge. Every week is huge. That's, um, that's, that's big time. It, it is. And then I'm just, you know, you're trying to be the best version of yourself so that when I am actually ready for a relationship again, I can, I can be that for, for my partner. I would say for my last relationship, I couldn't be that because there was stuff I didn't know was what was going on. So I couldn't be my best. Um, you know what I mean? So I, I'm really looking to rectify that for myself first. But yeah. then, because I know you said in the beginning of that question was, you know, serial relationship guy or used to be. And it's like, oh, I still am still a relationship guy, still very much a rela I would consider myself, uh, you know, that typical light skin, you know, uh, always booed, <laughs> typical, always booed, typical, uh, ha, ha, you know ha. what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like that's me. Um, oh, no. Oh, no. But, uh, no. You know what I mean? Listening to Trey songs and Chris Brown, you know? <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, that's the uh, most light skinned behavior. So uh, but, uh, not but too yeah, abusive. So I would say, you know, the serial relationship, what's, what stopped that was, was, was realizing <laughs> one, I, like I said, I used to be looking for marriage. I'm like, I was the one who was like, I was booed up all through college, should have been out there and just living relaxing. life, just, just living dating. life, enjoying being young yeah. and, and not even just the dating, but just there's so much pressure that comes with a relationship, especially yeah. when you're looking for marriage. I'm like 20 years old. I remember I broke up with one of my girlfriends in college and mm. I literally told her, like, I just don't see myself marrying you, which is, which is valid. But like that, that's really where my mind was at. Like, yeah, I'm just yeah. like, am I going to, am I going to marry you? Am I, am I not? But I was like 20 years old. My like, right, right, right. If I even if I thought the answer was yeah, I would marry her. I had to had to have to have looked at myself and said, was I even ready to be a husband? Which I absolutely wasn't. I was so focused absolutely on absolutely not. You were the a other baby. Person. Yeah, exactly. And so I think it's been years of that, which is exhausting. And so I think that's part of the the serial relationship. But I'm so busy working on myself. It's it's how could I possibly be a, a partner, a friend. Um, in the way that I should be to someone I'm dating. So that, I think that's a big part of me, um, you know, yeah. kind of chilling right now. Chilling. Um, I appreciate focusing. that. Yeah. I appreciate you sharing that. I'm wondering what else does working on yourself look like? Because when we hear like working on himself, I think we do think maybe therapy now because it's a bit more normal. Even if you thought sure. you were never that guy, you became that guy. Cool therapy. What yeah. else does working on yourself look like? What else happened in the, in the, in the working on himself factory? Yeah, so I would let us, say let uh, us through the windows. All the women are yeah, peering through the yeah. he working on himself windows. We want to know what's happening inside. So I would say I'm still. I want to say I'm still dating, but before I go there, how would you how would you define dating? How would you what would you define dating as? So I can make sure we're talking about the same thing. Okay, yeah, because I was you know you're right. We don't have an operational definition. I was like, wait, what? He's dating? Okay, it's very vague. Uh, it is vague. Dating to me. It doesn't have to be with marriage intention. Dating to me is connecting with people that you are attracted to. Okay. Flirting and, and pushing things, not pushing, proceeding in either a romantic or sexual direction and like maybe arranging to see them multiple times. So it could be, it could be like, a, I like this person I met at the gym. 
I'm gonna ask her out to lunch because she's attractive and I enjoy her company. I call that dating. Um, okay. uh, this girl slid into my DMs. Uh, she says she wanted to FaceTime. We FaceTime for two hours so I could learn more about her. To me, that's dating. It's anything okay. in which it's like a stranger person that's sure. not your cousin, that's not your sister, that's not related to you. <laughs> Any stranger, you know, not like, not like, oh, yeah. this is my personal trainer and I have to meet with them. No, I mean, yeah. like, this is a person that you really didn't have to meet that you're you're going out of your way, even if it's just for a lunch or a dinner. That's dating to me. That's okay. the state of dating. Uh, okay. And and so if, so I guess in uh, a clear definition of where I am is, dating but not looking for a relationship okay yeah you so are it, in uh-oh stop yeah. it right now folks <laughs> it's the ultimate trigger <laughs> something <laughs> casual so yep. we had a there's a video series that i created that went viral in 2020 when i was single and it's called yeah. i called it the, the something casual program and oh, i man. made like three installments of it because <sighs> best believe that wherever there's a dating app, there's a league of 50,000 men who are dating but not looking for a relationship. And that's why I wanted to, yeah. to sit with you because it's like we do have a picture of what that guy is and what he's looking for and what he's yeah. trying to do to us. And it's yep. really something that we've built from past hurt, yep. past experiences, exactly. uh, women's intuition, because some of it's very, very real, that this is a man who doesn't who doesn't mean me well. This is a man who is selfish, who's in it for himself. Yep. who is just and it's that's the crazy thing is like even just saying uh like because girls will often tweet i need to be selfish right now i'm entering my selfish yes. era my selfish season yeah, oh my but God. but a selfish <laughs> yeah. which is like yes. fine i actually yes. believe it's quite fine to be selfish yeah. but a selfish man versus a selfish woman gets such different reps oh my, so oh my gosh. when we hear something casual i think a lot of our brains go selfish man so when yep. you say that you're dating not looking for a relationship how are you navigating those conversations now that you've been through therapy in a more aware and healed way so as not to just repeat the same kind of mistakes where you where you're you're, you're, not, you're you're not dragging women into monogamy but you know what i mean how do you <laughs> how do you navigate this space yeah. yourself in a more ethical way and and honestly, that's the difference. And I think that's what I was saying before, which is the the communication, the, the radical transparency, like right off the bat, before we even hang out. Hey, okay. w what what are you looking for? Because this is what I can offer. This is what I'm looking for. What do you say? Hey, Wait, I, I want to I, I okay. know what that is. Yep. Yeah. Well, so if I was, yeah. like, if I was yeah. like, yeah, hey, Alex, like, I love your profile. What would you say? If you love my profile uh, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm messing with you, we want to go out, you know, say, hey. Like your profile, you know what I mean? Sp spit game, it depends on the situation. I can't, yeah, like you I'm, spin yeah. a little game, you're flirting you a little bit. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm liking the vibe. I'll say, but then, you know, but then I'll I say, the uh huh, okay. uh huh, uh huh. Okay, so I get the number. That's how I can't, I can't be doing it on the social media. I get right off the social media. I'm like, we, I'm too grown for that. Um, you start it's off not there, Snapchat. It's not, it's it's not Snapchat. It's not Instagram. I had a girl tell me, add me under Snap. I was like, all right, bye. I'll see, I'll see you later. I don't, you, I don't use Snap. Um, and then uh, no. I yeah, produce so I, a weekly. I produce a weekly show. You're different. Snap. No, you're different. You're a, a content creator. You're not like this. Is just literally <laughs> she just screaming. Like, yeah, I only use Snapchat, and she I'm doesn't screaming. produce Screaming. Yeah. No, no, no. So, but I got uh, you. The girl that's uh, like, I just want to send you three second photos every four yeah, weeks, and you're like, no, yeah, not really. I don't, have, I don't have time for this. Uh, no, like I work. But in I'm tech just saying, like, hey, I'd love to. You know, let's go out to dinner. You know, yeah, like talking to you, blah blah blah. But okay. I'm like, hey, but before we go out to dinner, j just curious, what are you looking for right now? Um, and before, in, in terms of the selfish, which is such a good point you brought up, I feel like when I first started dating, it was like, um, I would just say, hey, I'm not looking for X, Y, Z. I'm, this is what I'm looking for. But I just felt like I sounded like, a, like an asshole. I just yeah, like, it's... Hey, you, you come off like, hey, before we even hang out, let you know. Yeah, I'm, just I'm, let you know. Yeah. I'm just let you know what's good. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this is what's happening. Don't expect shit from me. Like, that's kind of the vibe it gave. It, and I, it I didn't really start... like that. It doesn't mm -mm. start well. I don't like it. So I've transitioned to like, hey, what are you looking for? What what do okay. you what do you want? Just be curious, right? What what do you want right now? Oh, uh, well, you know, I'm looking for XYZ, I'm looking for a long-term partner. Hey, appreciate you telling me. I think we're in different places right now. I don't want to waste your time. You know what I mean? So pause here. So yeah. if if this was the dinner situation, the person you're speaking with literally does tell you, I'm looking for that person that can become my person. I'm looking at it. I'm looking for a boyfriend. 
are you now cutting it off? Like, are you like, well, we're in different, like you just use that script. We're in different places. Thank you for letting me know. Does that now mean like, let's cancel the dinner so that you can get ahead of it or. Yeah, no, I, well, yeah, definitely cancel the dinner. Cause oh, you don't, okay. I'm paying for the, I'm paying for the dinner. So it's like, you know what I mean? So you, you, you're buying the dinner for someone who you already know you're in different places. It, it just can't end well. It can, it, you can keep going. But that's where, the, that's where toxic toxicity happens. And that's where, you know, you, you can't build trust off people who one wants a relationship and one's just kind of out there just doing whatever. Mm. You, 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 Cause I feel, I think the biggest part of a relationship is the very beginning, especially when you don't know the person, right. Mm. Um, with the swiping, right. Like th those first, that first hangout, those first real key conversations, so key to the rest of the relationship. Cause that's where everything, that's the base now of your relationship with them. Um, mm. So I'm just, there's no point even wasting their time. But in terms of still talking to them, like, will I still follow them on Instagram? Yeah, sure. Like if I think they're cute, ain't, ain't no reason because, you know, mm. I, I don't know what they're looking for and I'm not looking for it, but in the future I, I am. And I thought maybe they had a really cool vibe and they're still single in a year. Hey, what's going on? I'm, I'm kind of in a different place now. Did you, yeah, wanna, yeah, yeah. Did you still want to get dinner? Happened. And that's yeah. what happened in my relationship. But it's, yep. it is interesting to hear because again, us, the coven, the brigade of women who are like, oh, why he still follow me on Instagram? Why is he still liking my <laughs> stuff? Even though yeah. you know, I hate it, I just have an Instagram full of, yeah. it's like, I don't know, one of those could be your husband. Like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's just, it's nice to hear another perspective. It's nice to hear like another way in that it's, it's appropriately selfish. I want to date a man yeah. who does what he wants to do. I want yes. to date a man who prioritizes himself, who prioritizes yep. his health, uh, who doesn't appease me simply for the sake of appeasing me because I said I want something and then it would leave him resentful or unhappy. I want somebody Absolutely. who's ready for me. And that person is, it could be the Instagram follower every day. It could be the person who, like you said, from the get go, they might say they're ready, but it's yeah. just, I think, I think I, I have learned uh, watching this, this dating thing. <laughs> The entire mix, it's convoluted. It's not as clear cut. It's not, yeah. it's not only going to work if they say that they want exactly what you want the moment that you meet them. And that's something I think yeah. we need to dispel. Because I believe in hardballing. I dropped a whole episode on hardball. When I was yep. in my hardball season, I was going, okay, hey, Alex, nice to meet you. Hey, would you like today? Because I'm looking for a boyfriend. He would say, no, I'm not really there right now. I would say, well, thank you for your time. The dinner would be canceled. I wouldn't even exactly. follow you on social media. I would never see exactly. you again. Exactly. And, that's, and that's hardball season. But then yep. the season I was in when I met Ivan was coming out of that, realizing that that wasn't necessarily bringing me the partner I wanted. Not that it can't, but it wasn't exactly. in that moment. And am I mm -hmm. open to new strategies? Okay, this guy's saying he wants to be friends. That's not something I've ever previously entertained because I've been told that that's the ghetto. And I've been told yeah. that I'm worth, I'm worth more than being his friend. I'm a queen. I'm full, you know, which is yeah. all very true, but it's also like friendship is not evil. Friendship's not the ghetto. Friendship's not the worst thing in the world. French, friendship's not an L. It sounds like yeah. an L. We've, we've been told from Disney movies and, and uh, you know, coming of age stories, et cetera, that they either choose to be madly in love with you and obsessed with you, or they choose yeah. to be your friend. And one is a win and one is an L. And that's, I think that's so important. And I think this is what my therapist put me on, which is you can still build connection with people without dating them. And so where I'm at is like, if I go on a few dates with someone and I, you know, I like them, I like their vibe. We have a good time. I just enjoy meeting someone else. Like I never would have met you for any other reason, we have a good time together. I enjoy learning about how you grew up and, and what your life is like and what's going on. And it's like, if yeah. you enjoy spending time together, I'm just curiously, you know, cause how I think about it is like, there are what, what's how many billions of people on this floating Eight. rock, a floating rock in space. We're literally in space right now. Like none of this matters. Like, <laughs> You know, we're all gonna we're all gonna die. We're all you know, gonna die. gonna die. You can't you can't avoid it. And it's like, you know what? Hey, I, we're all I, gonna I'll die. Be here, I'll be present with you. I'll be present with you. Enjoy learning about your story. And if I, and what's good about the radical transparency and the communication is like because you already yeah. know what the situation is, if it ever dies off, it's like, okay, well, can't be too heartbroken because what I don't want to do is be running around breaking people's hearts, feel bad, 
I'm not that guy. It, it's complicated. It's just like yeah. there's no reason to even that's so much energy to even yeah. be trying to lie to people. And it's just like this is where I'm at. I would enjoy getting to know you. And you think you can enjoy getting to know me, and and it is what it is. And at any moment, you know, maybe you're you're cool with it in the beginning, and two three days down the road, you're like, I actually don't like this anymore. I'm like, well, and then you can leave, and you can vocalize that. You can that. leave, yeah. and there's no. It's like it's like you leave, and and you know, uh, you still have my number. We're not beefing. The the problem I've found doing this is I don't I think see there's the a lot smile of, on your face already. <laughs> I don't think there's a lot. I don't think there's a lot of men uh, kind of doing how I'm doing it. Uh, I don't obviously date a lot of men so i don't know but just from talking to guys i do know i don't think this is like a commonplace thing so i do have to deal with the ego in the beginning of like hey i'm actually not a player i'm not just like some pimp who's trying to pimp you out and lie to you like this is really like what's going on um and then the getting to know someone without dating them i think is confusing for some people because i've been in a yes. situation okay. and it was really short-lived i mean really short-lived maybe a couple what weeks. happened and I had told her, I said, hey, like, this is a situation. No chance am I getting out of a, uh, getting in a relationship. We're getting to know each other, learning about each other's past traumas, just enjoying knowing another real person in this planet, like I said. Yeah, and then yeah. We're it got to a die. point where it yeah. was like, uh, she's like, I can really see myself being with you. And I was like, okay. Okay, but. Appreciate it. Yeah, pre appreciate it. And, you know, that's, and then she's like, well, do you see this? Do you, do you, do you feel the same? I'm like, well. Wasn't it two weeks ago? I just said, uh, actually, I'm not going to be in a relationship with anybody. Um, right. You know, but it's, know it's fair for her to ask and it's fair for her yeah. to say exactly what she's feeling. Right. Yes, but it just, true. you just, yeah, you, you would disclaimed. Yeah, exactly. And then, but then it gets to, but then it gets kind of rocky if, if it's not like kind of what you said, like the ego thing where it's like, and then oh, the resentment, just, he, yeah, yeah, resentment comes from the ego. I'm going to change mm -hmm. that. I'm going to be the one yeah. that changes that. And then we were supposed to hang out and, I said, oh, I have to, it was actually when I got my dog, I was like, oh, I got to pick up my dog this weekend. I actually can't this weekend. She's like, all right, you're, you're playing games. Like, um, like either get in line or get out. And I was like, I'll I get out. I'll, <laughs> I get out thing. I guess I'm a bounce. Like, all right, get, I'm, I guess I dodged a bullet too. And I'm, uh, I'm laughing, but it's painful, but yeah. it's true. You did like, yeah, we, we believe that people, that's that childhood wound. Yeah. Yep. Um, Mm -hmm. That's that golden rule stuff that we need to mm -hmm. drop and learn how the real world works. Just because you yeah. feel someone, you do something for someone doesn't mean they need to do the same thing for you. Just because you feel some way towards somebody doesn't mean they owe you the same type of feeling. That's yep. painful. That's very real. It's not romantic. Yep. It's not cute. It's not yep. a fun story to go tell the girls. It doesn't win you points in the group chat, but it's yeah. the truth is that, hey, I really fell for this guy and he didn't owe me anything and he didn't feel it. I was in a situation... Yep. Uh, it wasn't even a situation. That's the thing. I, I found myself in a moment where yeah. I was vibing with someone. It was real casual, real chill. Saw each other, saw each other for like a couple weeks across the summer. And then I started to, to catch a little feel. I was like, okay, well, now I know him well, right? I know yeah. the wounds. I know uh, you know, the things he's proud of. I'm starting to learn things maybe about family through storytelling um you know just learning different details and i'm like okay i have affection for this person yes. right that's like growing and building and this person is successful this person um you know has the potential to you know we could theoretically combine our lives at this moment yeah. and we could both i could see it right we could power yes. each other up but yep. i was looking and ready for something that he was not and he made it clear the whole time that he just got out of something and wasn't looking for some i said cool yep. so when i had that feeling this was the first time where i was like well i'm gonna tell him you know similar to the situation mm -hmm. i'm gonna tell him this is how i feel um i actually don't even know if i asked him if he felt the same i think i just wanted i wanted to make it known because i i didn't yeah. want the cognitive dissonance one thing i try to avoid in dating is is feeling one thing but doing another cognitive dissonance yeah. i'm like nah let me tell this yeah. man how i feel Hey, yeah. I told him, uh, took it like a champ, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and he was like, well, thank you. But, you know, he got all choked up like this. I, when I'm when I'm in a relationship, it feels different. Yeah, like, it, it doesn't feel like how I feel with you. And hearing that, funny enough, it didn't hurt. Mm. It didn't. I. Uh, it didn't hurt. Call it the amount of rejections I've been through the, before. Sure. Call it. Um, the awareness I had, the belief that 
I had in myself of what I wanted, what I knew I was worthy of that was coming that had nothing to do with him. Him rejecting me doesn't affect my worth or my sense of worth for the first time. It just felt like, okay, well, you know, thanks G like that was real yeah. sweet. You know, this, this yeah. whole thing's been cool. And he was kind of like, well, uh, you know, do we have to stop hanging out? I'm like, like I can, I'll see you next week. You know? yeah. like, you're, you're still fine. I'll see you next week. You know, but it's, <laughs> but now I just know. <laughs> but now I just know this isn't yeah. going anywhere. Um, yes, and that's that's freeing too. So it's I'm I'm glad you shared that story. There's a way yeah. to come out of it and still be cool. There's a way to come out of that and focus on your ego and make this person an enemy to yourself, to the group chat that helps you feel better about being rejected. I hope we can grow past that childish thing of needing to make the other person who rejected us an enemy just because they were being properly selfish. They wanted something we didn't want, or they, you know, they were ready. They weren't ready for something that we were ready for or interested in. This world is too big. I've been said this world is too big uh, to be focusing on people like that and to get mad and, and to be making yeah. enemies at all. It's a small rock. Uh, so, Alex, with that, I thank you so much for being on the Dating Unsettled show. Your story is awesome. Appreciate um, it. Anything else on your heart or any anything you want to point people to when you do <laughs> when you do crawl out of the factory? And yeah, you're ready? yeah, yo, go ahead, follow me at Big Daddy Boricua. But uh, you know, aside from that, I would say there needs to be a lot more patience on the man side and the woman side in dating. Uh, I think social media is making everything harder. Just remember that's not real life. Um, yeah. Be patient, ask questions, and uh, everybody go to therapy. <laughs> go to therapy. Well done. <laughs> All right. Thanks. See y'all later. Uh, and then uh, also, yeah, this is the Daniel Sell Show. So be sure to like, subscribe so you don't miss an episode of your new favorite show. You can follow us on all podcast platforms at Dating Unsettled. You can follow, follow us, find us on the website, datingunsettled.com, or me at Joy Ofodu, J O Y O F O D U. You know, there's been new episodes every week for a very long time, and now I'm just doing what I want. So you're going to get an episode when you get an episode, and you're going to like it. And I'm not going <laughs> to abandon you, and you're not going to abandon me. See you when I see you. <laughs>